All right, this beast just popped up on Facebook Marketplace. It's 2004 Yamaha YFZ450. You can see it looks really nice. Looks like it has decent tires. Graphics gets cool. Pro taper bars. Uh, O'Neill grips. So it looks pretty dang nice. Uh, AC Nerf bar. It's got a lot of aftermarket parts. So basically, it says 2004 YFZ450 plastics are in good shape. Tires hold air. And it says engine needs by a man. Don't only have time for $1,500 or best offer cash. Um, lots of newer parts on it. PM for details. Quad doesn't run currently. So you can see the pipe is off of it right now. Looks like he tore down the top end and confirmed he needed the bottom end. But. I texted him and he said that the rod was fine. So he doesn't know what's causing the problem. So it could be something simple. So I said, you know, I don't know what it is. Could be a buy man fix. I don't really know. I'll offer you a thousand bucks. I'll come grab it tonight. And he said, sure. So I think he's just wanting to get rid of it. Um, that's a really, really good deal, especially in this condition. So we're gonna go try and pick it up. All right. We hit the road here. We've got about an hour and five minutes left on this journey. <laughs> hopefully we don't hit a deer and that uh, we get there safely. So hopefully it's a nice quad. I'm hoping we get lucky with it and it's something simple like the uh, flywheel is coming off or something weird. I don't know. Hopefully we get lucky. We'll see. Yeah, that's what I've been told. I. I bought a house since then, so when I moved, um, the chain must have fell down in the case, because the chain okay. was still on it, um, so you can feel the chain there. I tried to get it up, so that way we could put it in gear and kind of let it rotate. Yeah. But, uh... Looks nice otherwise, you know? Yeah. I mean, the plastics are in good shape. Yeah. I was told this, this exhaust is freaking super loud. <laughs> So. And the head you said looked good? Yeah. Yeah, the head and... Um, the cam looks good? Yeah, there's not even no rust on them from sitting. So, and... They look pretty good. Yeah. Well, and I work on I work on semis, do engine work. Okay. And these, you know, there's not much for chipping or nothing. Even what the, the heck? Good. That's really weird, isn't I, it? I literally have no idea. I... Uh, Did you take off the cylinder at all and... Uh, we had it up once, and uh, we didn't see no scoring or nothing, in it, so we put it back down. And then that's when you checked out the crank as well, or the the rod. You said you checked for play in the rod. Yeah, even from what we did to do that, I mean it's back kind of backwards, but just kind of put a crank on the or a ratchet on the crank bolt, and then rotate it, and you mm -hmm. can feel when the piston moves. Yeah, and it was instant. So. Okay. Huh. Yeah, so... That's so weird. <laughs> it was fast, though. But... So you were riding it, and then all of a sudden just, like, lost power, kind of, or what? Well, it started sputtering, and then it cleared up, so I was like, okay. So, and then, of course, it was hot outside. Hmm. And, uh... Then all of a sudden, it just died. I mean, we did everything we could to try to get it, you know, pull... It did pull start once with a forklift. We were pulling it with a forklift, and... It, pulled it popped over and ran for a little bit and then died? Yeah. So. And you said there wasn't any knocking or anything? No, no knocking. It sounded healthy when it did fire up. Oh. That's... So. Oh yeah, nice pipe on it. Yeah, I got everything to put it back together in here. The head. Um, you got all the bolts for it and everything? Yeah. I screwed them all in when I took them okay, out. Okay, nice. Yeah. The that helps. <laughs> Like, okay. I don't even know what this is, so... Yeah, the tensioner. Yeah. Does that look pretty good? Yeah. It's not going in, so that's good. I don't have... Is that any... a CDI right there? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Was that off of this one, or just an extra one, or...? It should be off this one. If it's in the box, it will come off. Okay. It's been a while since I took it apart. But, we did put a new starter on it. Um, we tried a stator. My buddy works on him. He tried to put the stator on it for me. Okay. And nothing. And it had good spark and everything? Yeah. <laughs> well, from what we could tell, anyways. I yeah. 
there was barely any any spark on it because it wouldn't turn over fast enough. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, it would it would go woohoo woohoo woohoo, and then it would just you know, it would go fast and slow, fast slow, and then it's just what it did. <laughs> but when you try with a ratchet, there's no resistance at all. You could feel it had compression. You think it's like a ground issue where it's like or. No. Well, and I tried that with the starter. Just I just tried making my own ground, and we put a jump pack on it. And same thing. Yeah. That's the weirdest thing ever. I've never heard of that happening before. Yeah, I don't know. It, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't seem like it needs major engine work, but... Maybe it does, yeah. Maybe just a couple bearings or something. Well, Maybe crank... Well, you said you check crank bearings, too, yeah, for they, play. They didn't feel wore out. I mean, there was no side to side, no back and forth. So, it's a bummer, but it's time to move on. Yeah, so you didn't dig into the clutch area or anything? No, I didn't okay. dig into the clutch at all. Um, Maybe something broke off in there or something? Uh, possible, I don't even know if it's ever been apart. I okay. assume it has before I got it because of the exhaust and all the stickers and stuff. Yeah. i never been big into it, but... Yeah. So you rode it twice and then... <laughs> oh. That's just terrible. I bought it for four thousand, <laughs> and um, I thought I had a good deal. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's not a terrible deal if it ran, you know. <laughs> well, it ran, and everything else I've seen on Facebook was about four thousand. So. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. You've got the air filter in there. Header. Yeah, all the, all the parts look pretty good. Oh, the, sh the shock stays on good too. Oh, yeah. I tried to look, I looked around the garage, I didn't see nothing else, so I went to it. Yeah, the, all the main things look like they're here. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I've got a parts machine at home. It's a 2004. I'm not sure if you can swap parts or not. We'll see. <laughs> I was told, so I had a, my same buddy that helped me put the stator and had an old 9 that was fuel injected. Okay. And he sold it to a power sports company and they were just going to use the frame but supposedly you can't use the motor i was going to put the motor in this but oh, okay. supposedly they're not interchangeable oh that's a bummer yeah yeah i think a, a new um motor for this is like 2500 so it's like yeah. it's like what do, you, what do you do you know yeah well and i was quoted uh, 4,500 from a group, from a guy over here to rebuild it. 4,500? Yeah, it's like, really? That's crazy. And then I Because the top end looks fine, right? Right, yeah, I mean... The so what end, would you have to do? Tear down the bottom end and well, new next, crank? Well, he would just automatically assume that it gets everything brand new. Oh, okay. So, but there's a guy over in, uh, they call, he's called Matt Bignall, and, uh... He was gonna do it on the side, but I decided just to unload it. Yeah. So. Probably better off that way. <laughs> well, and you don't. It, you get it back and it breaks again. <laughs> that's exactly my thought. I thought, well, if I want one, I might as well just go buy a brand new one. Yeah. That way, maybe there's a warranty on it. Yeah, exactly. Because you could do all it, this motor work and then. Yeah, because you said a clutch or a tranny or something could go out. Yeah, if you don't do the work yourself, you never know, you know. Right. And I just don't have the time. Yeah, I hear you. All right, well, cool. I think I'll take her. Sweet. It'll be a good project. Yeah, I'll have to check back in and watch it. Yeah, yeah, check out the video, see if I ever get it running. Yeah. Hopefully I do. It'd be nice to hear it run again. It was a killer machine when it was running. It's got cool graphics on it and everything. Yeah, it was an eye catcher for sure. Yeah. The lights are, they put LEDs in it too. Oh, nice. So, everything worked. Yeah, it looks like a nice machine otherwise. <laughs> well, I'll probably tear down the whole engine and inspect it all and well, see what, and you know, what's going on. I don't know if the battery has any life left in it. There is an hour counter underneath the seat. Oh, there is. Okay. I think, um... Is there a battery in it? Yes. Still? Okay. Yeah, it was brand new. Nice seat cover, too. Yeah, I got a little bit of, uh, um, sticky. I forget how these things come off. It's the pack. Right here. So, yeah, the battery was brand new. Um, 
where was that hour counter right here? So this is reading 328.9. I can't imagine it's never been apart if it has that many hours. Yeah, that's a lot of hours. Especially for one of these. Yep. But yeah, maybe a crank bearing went and you just can't feel it or something. Well, and I don't Where is the CDI go on this thing? It's right I believe here. it goes, it plugs into one of these. Um, actually, I think it sits on the air box if I remember right. Oh, yeah, yep. So to get the air box out, you had to take the CDI off. Yeah. Yeah, I think that. Because this air box was all up in here and this. I think thing, it goes on the side over here. Yeah, I got somewhere. Uh, this piece right here. Okay. Connects to the back of the carb if the carb was on. Okay. And then it kind of fishes its way like that. Okay. Um, the carb's in here, I believe. Either that or it's. It's on here, I think. Oh, is it still in there? Yeah. It's still oh, in yeah, there. Yeah, it's still right there. Okay. That was good. Okay. I know that. It didn't have no idling issues or nothing. Okay. So the carb should be set. I drained all the gas. Okay. I was running 93 in it. Yeah. So. So it ran good when it did run. Yeah, it did it. Good it power. Was, yeah, I mean, I could let it sit here and idle for five minutes, warm up, not have to do nothing, don't give it no throttle. It had plenty of power, 60 mile an hour. <laughs> wow. And I'm a chunky boy, so 60 mile an hour for me is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, 60's not too bad. All right, cool. Well, I guess I'll take the parts bin first, load yeah. that up, and then we'll uh, go from there. Well, we got the beast in the back there. Thousand bucks. Guy was really nice. He uh, knew me from my videos, so that was kind of cool. And uh, he let me film. So that was really awesome. So I hope you guys like the uh, behind the scenes negotiate. Well, not really negotiations, because we kind of already agreed on price beforehand. But I'm um, just kind of talking over the, the machine because this one's kind of a mystery. He doesn't really know what's going on with it. He said he checked the crank bearings, he checked the rod bearing, so he's he's really not sure. So it's definitely a, a mystery. But we'll try to figure it out. We'll get home, unload her, and uh, start digging into it. Let's see if we can figure out the mystery of why this thing doesn't start. It's the next morning. It was getting a little bit too late to work on it last night, but we got the beast. Let's go check it out. Of course, the snow would right on top of it. There she is. We're tearing down the engine anyway, so I think. <laughs> Hopefully, we don't have to, but yeah, she's a pretty clean machine. Not a bad looking quad for a thousand bucks. He paid four for it, you can hear him say. And, um, yeah, he, he lost quite a bit of money on this one. Let's get this thing unloaded back in the garage. This thing cleaned up a little bit. We'll let her drain off into the drain right here. The garage is heated, so it's like 55 degrees in here. Actually, it's like, now it's 52 because I opened the door. <laughs> but it'll drain into there. And then we'll start working on it. We'll see if we can get this thing to fire up today. All right, so you guys saw this when the guy was talking about it. But a little closer up look of everything. You can see it's pretty dang clean. Engine doesn't look too bad. 
Pro Taper bars, Hauser uh, steering stem here, Power Mad hand guards. I think it's really nice. Tires aren't too bad. They're getting down there, but they're whole shot tires. <laughs> That's awesome. Front bumper looks stock. Does not have a grab bar. Graphics on it are pretty cool. Got nice grips on her. Pretty sweet machine. Let's quick check the oil. See what that looks like. If there's any in here, I think he said he drained everything, but we'll see. Oh, there's some oil left in there. Looks pretty clear too. So at least it's not milky. Yeah, there's not much in there. I'm wondering if he ran it low on oil. And that's why uh, he was having problems. He said he replaced the stator, or his friend replaced the stator. They were thinking maybe that was a problem. So I think what we're going to do is start there, start at the stator, and just see if there's anything binding up in the stator area. Looks like he had these caps off. And we'll try to get that cam chain out of there. He said he was trying to fish it out of there because it dropped in the case. Just to see if we can spin over the engine here. So the cam chain's down here somewhere. Oh, I can feel it. All right, so we got the cam chain out. It's a little bit stiff. I think just probably from sitting with no oil. Let's just put a little bit of oil down the cylinder here. Just to lube it up in case there's something stuck in there. Um, he said it was sitting for, I think, two years, so without anything on this. So I'm a little bit worried about that, but he said there's no rust on anything, which is good. I'll just lube up that cylinder a little bit. And I noticed that the cam chain guide, this one right here, this little piece was broken off in there. So I'm wondering if maybe a skip time or something. And that's why it was binding up. I don't know. But let's just see if it rotates now. Smoothly in here. Just gonna rotate this. Let's see if it does. I can feel it getting it's binding up towards the top. It's a weird feeling. I feel like it's a little bit hard right there. So right at the top of the stroke, you can feel it binding up a little bit. Yeah, right there. So it's definitely smooth in there, like the guy was saying, but I can, I can feel the tension as you turn over the engine. It gets a little bit stiff at the top of the stroke. So I don't know why that would be. Let's first take off this cover right here. See if anything's binding up. Uh, maybe the crank is bent or something weird. And then we'll um, probably take off the cylinder. And then if we take off the cylinder, we can kind of feel if it rotates over smoothly without the piston in there. If it does, we know it's a piston or the cylinder causing problems. Because um, he said he inspected the crank and it was fine. So I guess we'll find out. Let's take off this cover first. Maybe a gear is getting bound up in there. And they didn't know it, that feels smooth. We'll see if it gets bound up still. Oh, still getting bound up. Let's continue to take this off. You can 
see it has new gas. There's one more down here. Oh, one more. Let's see what the new stator looks like that they put in. It looks like new wires at least. I think everything's off of there. bearing in there feels pretty good. I thought maybe it was getting stuck in that or something weird. There's some play in there. But it might need that play like that. We'll see. It could be the one-way bearing going. Like it's getting sticky as you rotate it. Let's see. See if it's still sticky without that cover on there. Yeah, it's still sticky. All right, we're gonna take the flywheel off here. All right, I think I found the right puller for it. Twist that guy on there. Let's see if I can crank it off. There's one way bearing right in here. Let's get that off of there. So this just sits in there like that. Felt like the one way bearing was good. All right, so nothing wrong with that. Yeah, now I can be able to rotate over the engine. I think we might have to take off the clutch side now. <laughs> but yeah, so far everything's looking really good in there. Not seeing anything weird. No metal chunks or anything. And the oil, nothing. So no signs of rod bearing failure or anything like that. All right, so I put the flywheel back on and it's still binding up. So I think it's time to finally take off the cylinder and then uh, just check out that rod bearing. I'm not seeing any signs of metal pieces in the oil though, so I feel like that's kind of interesting. But before we jump to any conclusions, let's just drain the oil out. There's a bolt right there. You guys can see right underneath the shifter, right there. Let's get that drained out and just see if there's any metal chunks in there. That'll tell us everything we need to know. 
if those bearings are going bad. I've always seen metallic flakes when the bearing went bad. Unless the guy, of course, drained the oil. But I don't think he did. Maybe he did. So far, nothing. Nothing on the end of the bolt. So, so far I'm not seeing any metallic flakes. Which is super strange. All right, here's the oil. Not seeing any metallic flakes, are you guys? Nothing. Hmm. So oil checks out. Wasn't a whole lot in there. I'm guessing there's more in the tank. But um, yeah. Almost like you ran it low on oil. It would be great if it was just a piston ring. <laughs> that would be awesome. But if it's the crank bearings. That's fine too. I don't mind tearing apart these engines. They're not that bad. Kind of fun actually. <laughs> There's that bolt. I think that's pretty much it for the cylinder. So that should come right off now. A couple taps, it'll break free. Doesn't feel like he ever really had the cylinder off of here. See how the gasket's still sticking to the the base. I think it's gonna be like a piston ring, honestly. So that was kind of hard to take off of there. Or maybe it's a warped cylinder. See what's going on. Cylinder looks pretty good. Couple light scratches on it. Nothing crazy though. I believe this is a Nicacel cylinder. Let me just check with the magnet. I see magnet doesn't stick to it, so it's nick is cell plated. See that? So you can't hone that out or anything. Oh rod bearings for sure. <laughs> Look at that. The rod doesn't move into the crank at all. Yeah, so it is rod bearing. Uh Bummer. You can see that. A rod doesn't move at all. <laughs> Pinched pretty tight in there. Why weren't there any metal chunks though? Oh, there's metallic flakes up here. Did the guy drain the oil? You can see the metallic flakes right there. What the heck? Why wouldn't they be in the oil then? That's super weird. Piston rings are all free, those look good. So I think it's just the rod bearing went. That's it. <laughs> he told me he checked the rod though. So side to side's fine, but yeah, it barely rotates. Yeah, she she locked up pretty good. That's why. So, at least we know the problem now. I guess we can start taking this engine out and uh, disassembling it.
All right, now that the piston's off, we can kind of get a closer look at the rod here. You can see it's moving with the crank. Should be moving separately, so those bearings are crunchy in there. Let's see. Yeah, those are toast. You can see it gets hard right there. That loosens up. You can still feel it's crunchy in there. So it's not horrible, but it definitely is that. And I can see chunks of metal in there. So, yeah, that's what failed. Over at the right side of the machine, let's get this coolant drained out. All right, now we can open up the cap. Just gonna spurt out of there. Oh, no it's not going to. Was that all the coolant that was in there? I guess it was. All right. So not much coolant in there. We've gotta get this guy off. That detaches from the machine here. There's gonna be an O be an O-ring in there. Keeping that tight. This is probably gonna drain. <laughs> you can see the O-ring. Still looks good. If you've got coolant leaking from here, that O-ring's junk. I've had that happen before. Just tuck that behind something. Get that out of the way. I'm gonna put that one back in there. I don't lose those bolts. Then what the heck, we'll check out the impeller right away. Just for fun. Cause something, something failed on this. It got too hot and I'm thinking it was low on oil, because there wasn't much in there. Pin. There we go. Looks good. You can see where that gets stiff with the crank. The is moving with the crank though, so that's good. You can see it gets stiff right there. It doesn't want to move anymore. Right there, it doesn't want to move. So right at the top of the stroke, it gets stiff. All right, let's check out the oil filter. Maybe the oil filter caught all the metal shavings. Looks like it might be a little milky in there. Oh, maybe not. Oh yeah, I see some metal, metal flakes in there. Let's see. Oh yeah. There's metallic flakes. Look at all those. So the filter caught a lot of them. Oh, look at all those. Holy cow. Yep. That's where they all went. <laughs> wow. Lots of metal in there. All right, so I think we ran into a slight problem. Um, last step of getting this engine out is the swing arm bolt. And that sucker is on there. 
It is not coming out. I think it's frozen in place. She's rusted pretty good. Not budging. Yeah. So, I think we might have to cut that out. I know this happens a lot on 400 EXs. I've never had it happen to me, but this is the first time. I think a lot of people take a saw and cut the bolt right there and right there and get that out somehow. So, I don't know if we're able to cut it or not. <laughs> It's gonna be tough. We might try heat first, see if that breaks it up, but it is not budging a millimeter. I'm gonna try to heat this up before we wreck the whole thing. Let's see if that works. Try this again. See if it budges at all. Nothing. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. Not a single little bit did that budge. All right, we've got the air hammer. Starting to move. We got her with the air hammer. So, that was super exciting. That thing was not budging at all. We used penetrating oil down the crack, tip of crack we could get in. Then I used this air hammer with this attachment like that. That stuck right in the hole. And then just went to town. I probably spent 30 minutes just with the air hammer alone. And what I did was kind of wiggle it up and down so that I had different angles on that bolt and then kind of moved the bolt around like that with the air hammer and uh, eventually came free. And then the lubrication got in the cracks and as you push it out, it became easier and easier. And this is gonna be tough to get the rest of the way out, I bet. We'll have to kind of pound on it and see if we can get her to go here. But uh, at least we got it most of the way out. Gives us a little hope here. 
Now we can actually take a ratchet to this and spin it. Because before we couldn't do that. Let's see. Until it frees up here. Let's see if we can get that to come out here. All right, here we go. I think it's coming. Through. So a one hour job turned into a three hour job. That was fun. Oh man. I think it was rusting. I think it was rusted in those bushings. Right here. That's the culprit. So we'll have to get like a one of those plumbing attachments for the drill and really get those cleaned out. Maybe get some sandpaper in there. But we've almost got the bolt out. It's still stuck in there. A couple more hits with the hammer, she'd come right out. Finally got her out of there. Holy cow. Oh man. That's a lot of work. <laughs> that feels great. All right, now that we finally have the engine out, that's what that rod bearing looks like in there. You can see, completely seized. I cleaned up the top of the engine here, had a bunch of grime everywhere. But now we can start tearing this thing apart. I'm interested to see what the inside of the clutch looks like, so let's start getting that off. We gotta get out the big boy to get that one off. But that zipped right off like no problem. It's not reverse thread, so it's normal threaded. So that came off, that was good. Looks pretty good. You can see no oil was in it, or very high at least. It's all dry in there. So I'm pretty sure it ran out of oil. Didn't have much oil in it. 
Huh. It's got a Henson clutch. <laughs> Sweet. Look at that. Wow. Looks really nice, doesn't it? Does it have a Henson clutch basket as well? I think it might. Looks brand new. Wow. That's pretty cool. Let me, that might be the stock clutch basket. Let's see. Just have to get that big uh, nut off of there and then the whole clutch can come off. And we'll start working on the oil pump. We'll see if the oil pump's working. All right, oil pump. Doesn't look like it's pumping anything. I can hear it in there. I just don't know if it has any oil to pump. That's the thing. So we'll have to take that out and make sure that's all good to go. But we've got to get the shifter off. All this stuff has to come off. All right, so for future reference, there's a lip right here on this gear that goes towards the inside, then the washer, then this nut sits like that. And then you've got this gear. It's got the lip on the inside as well. And I believe that's pretty much it. And obviously, this mark right here has to line up with the mark right there. You can see. So, can't forget to do that either. So, I think that's, that's not stock, I don't believe. Typically you see eight millimeters. All right, we've got the case splitter on here. Let's see what happens. If it was split before, should be fairly easy coming off of here. Oh. <laughs> that uh they broke free there. Sometimes they're hard. Sometimes they're really easy. Let's see if it's coming. All right, that one was pretty easy. I think we got her all the way off here. And we'll see. If we're good, should be. Woo! Huh, look at that big chunk in there. Oh man, look at all the chunks down here. Holy. Huh. That's crazy. Can't believe that didn't come out in the oil. 
Those are huge chunks. Man, oh man. All the bearings feel pretty good, surprisingly. Wowza. That is crazy in there. Look at all these metal chunks. <gasps> and this big piece of, I'm guessing that's the timing chain guide part of it. That was lodged in here too. Well, that thing's just probably packed full. I can see all the chunks underneath there. We'll get the crank out next, but um, yeah, that is that is pretty insane. All right, we got the crank out. You can see the failure. So the bearings in there failed, crunched up, got hot, and uh, that tightened up. That's why it was hard to rotate. But everything looks really good. Transmission looks perfect. From what I can see so far. So we lucked out there. Yeah, no teeth broken at all. Really, really smooth. Bearings are all good. Not one bearing that's locked up, which is really surprising. Really, really smooth bearings. So it's just the, the rod bearing. We'll probably put new crank bearings in too, just because we're in there already. But yeah, so really the only problem with it is the rod bearing. So that is pretty crazy. We've got all the parts laid out here. You can see all the parts here. They're kind of all in order. We've got the engine up here. The head and everything is over here. And you guys saw the head when we were looking at it. All the valves look good. No bent valves or anything. So I think all that's gonna be good to go. The cams look good. Valve cover looks good. CDI in there. So we should be good once we get that rod bearing fixed. So we'll order up a couple parts. We'll send this off to my guy that does the rod bearings. And then we'll reassemble next video and uh, attempt the first start. Should be interesting. This thing's gonna fly once it's done. And then we've gotta get a new piston for it too. We'll have to see what size that is. But lots of work to do. That was definitely a big job getting that swing arm bolt out of there. But the air hammer saved us. There's no way I would have been able to get that out without the air hammer. So I'm really happy we had that. And uh, yeah, we were able to get it out without breaking anything, which was a miracle in itself. So anyway guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Mystery solved on this one. And uh, until next time, we are out.